don't have any time for any gossip now. Eh? Yes. Can you come over? You know, you know I have a place in Miami, in Miami right now, in the Miami studio. And I'm like, okay. So I went, you know, he stays here in Florida. And <laughs> I don't know no other way to put this, you guys. It's I was shocked. I mean, there's there's no other way to put it. Um I was shocked. That's the best way I can put it. I was shocked. And and this is the thing, because this took place when Manasseh was in his 20s, you know, I message don't look the way it looked now. You remember how the old iPhones look? Well, you're going to see that if I put the clip up. I'm still thinking about it. If I put a little picture up, you're going to begin to see that you can tell I took a picture of his laptop. I took a picture of his laptop and I took a couple of pictures. <laughs> Sorry, Manasseh, they want just one. I took, I took, let me go ahead and confess. It, it wasn't just one picture. Lord, I'm in a confessing mood. It was about two or three pictures. Now, I know Manasseh probably going to see this. It was about two or three pictures. So sorry. So sorry. I had to. <laughs> I, had, I had to. I had to take the picture. I just needed the no. And I needed the proof so I can, if I ever talked about it, I, I wouldn't be nervous about it. And that ain't all I did. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, I've been so messy right here recently in my personal life because Paul's on Manasseh. I'm going to get back to Manasseh. Because there are two other people that allege grooming, predatory grooming from Bishop T.D. James. I told these other two people, I'm going to tell you exactly what I told them. I said, you know what? Go file a police report or, or and Get you a lawyer and file a complaint. That's what Cassie did. Ain't it what Cassie did? Cassie filed a complaint. And in the complaint, she told all of the details. And then she had a check in hand. I mean, proverbially, not really. But it was settled in 26 hours, I think it was. So this is what I told him to do. I said, now, when you do that, I'll be able to now go live and talk about it. Right now, you just telling me a very believable that I believe is probably real since I've seen Manasseh's receipts. A real story about predatory grooming from Bishop T.D. Jinks. I can accept that as the truth, but in order for me to get on the platform to dis and discuss it, I need for you to go do something legal. That's what I need for you to do. One of them not both of them. One of them right now is posturing themselves to foul. I'm not going to say their name. I did send the name to Bishop T.D. Jakes through somebody. We're one person away from each other. So that I'm just going to keep it real. Can I just keep it real? Because I know how this works. If they get the name, they're going to know within themselves, did we fruck? Frolic. Oh. Okay, so I wanted to play um, those few minutes of Larry Reed's video because I want to talk about those specific statements and do commentary around it because it's rather clear to me what Larry Reed's position is. Um, but just hearing people say he was a pastor and all of these things, I had questions. So one of the things that was really questionable for me is he started to go in on other YouTubers um, saying that they're doing content around T.D. Jakes um, and basically telling other YouTubers how to formulate their content um, when, in fact, he came back with the same thing and in so many ways is alleging that he has proof that T.D. Jakes had groomed Manassas, Manassas Jordan. So I'm just like, what in the world is he talking about? First, 
again, he's telling other content creators what they should and should not say. And everybody, to my understanding, has pretty much said what everybody is saying he did. Um, but now Larry Reed is actually coming out basically saying he has the evidence. So I don't know if he's doing this to try to drive more traffic toward his channel, because then at the end of his video, he says, if you guys want the truth about TD Jakes, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon. And I'm like, what? Okay. But anywho, so let's keep going. So one of the things that was extremely um, troubling for me is he stated that he needed to have proof that this was actually happening to Manasseh. Um, he said he believed him. However, he wanted proof. He wanted the black and white or whatever evidence he had. So, you know, he described meeting with him and he described being able to see some kind of text messages. Um, and he did show one of the text messages. However, he alluded to there were some more text messages that were very damaging, but he did not show those. So it didn't really make sense to me why he was holding those unless he was holding those text messages as leverage. But another thing, based on his own statements, he took those pictures without um, the young man's um, approval. So, I mean, if you take things without people's approval, isn't that stealing? Um, so not only did he take pictures of the actual messages, you didn't even tell him you took it and then you showed it on your platform. And it seems like this young man was confiding in you. So that just seems like, you know, I don't understand what to call it, but to take something from somebody that was victimized and use it for yourself gain is some of the behavior that the people have been calling out with a lot of these pastors. So I'm just wondering why did that happen? Then he states, and again, I played you guys that video clip because I was blown back when I heard this, um, you know, him telling this story. And I was like, did I just hear him say this? I got to like go back later and do commentary on this video. So what he stated is he knew some other victims and stated that he told them to file police reports. And then he went on to say, well, you know, you know what happened with Cassie, you know, she filed it and she got the money right away. Well, this is this is the thing. People that are victimized, obviously, you know, in some situations where depending on who victimized them, there is a monetary benefit, but it's not necessarily a benefit because this person has endured hell. So the fact that he just jumped to money right away mm, kind of gave me cringe vibes. Then after telling these victims that they should file a report, he then went behind their back and said that he told somebody that was close to T.D. Jakes what was happening so that they can let T.D. Jakes know. And that was it for me when I heard that. I said, what in the F-U-C-K is going on? So first of all, he stated that he sympathized with these, you know, victims or, you know, whatever we want to call them. But yet you went back behind their backs after you told them to call the police and file a report. And then you went back and basically gave the information to the supposed person that victimized them to let them know, him know that they were going to file a report or they were looking at filing charges or whatever it was they were looking to do. So it's like you're playing both sides. And I'm wondering what was the reason that you were playing both sides? Because then later in the video, which I did not give you guys a clip of that, he stated he was offered $500,000 to not talk about it. And then that's when it started making sense to me. He stated he didn't take the money, but maybe he did take the money. Maybe he signed something that stated that he wouldn't talk about it for X, Y, Z amount of time. Because why, if you go look on his YouTube video, his YouTube um, 
channel, he's done a lot of videos within the last, I don't know, few days or few weeks, strictly about TD Jakes. But yet he's telling other content creators to not do it. This doesn't make any sense. We're talking about the same thing that you're talking about. The only thing that's different is you are showing the text messages, which is actually more damaging to his reputation. So the fact that he's telling un other content creators to not talk about TD Jakes because they can be sued for potentially damaging his reputation, then is it because Larry Reed wants to be the only one that's showing up in the search engine. Is he trying to get money from TD? Like what is really going on? Um, I, like I said, I wanted to talk about this because when I was watching his video, I said, what in the hell did I just hear? Um, so hopefully you guys can follow me again. I did not give you guys a snippet of the part where he stated that he was offered five hundred thousand dollars and i'm going to tell you this if he was offered five hundred thousand dollars i believe he took it i believe if in fact he did take it i think it was for maybe a, a time period and maybe the money is gone and maybe he's trying to get more but there's more to this story that he's not telling because what benefit would you have to run back and tell someone that you stated in your own words that you believe um prophet manassas you believe what he stated so you believe that there was was some grooming and or inappropriate behavior but you went back to the person that did it and let them know to give them a heads up that somebody that they had victimized was looking to take action that was weird as hell to me y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe and as always i'll catch you guys in the next video